Seattle Mariners' newest position player, outfielder slash first baseman Luke Rayleigh, was acquired by the Mariners from the Tampa Bay Rays. While Rayleigh was in the pool winning MVP during a pool volleyball game with his wife while they were on their honeymoon. Yeah, actually I was in the pool playing pool volleyball with my wife and a bunch of people from the resort. I had to get my wife out of the pool and said, hey, we got we got to go up to the room and, you know, discuss some stuff. So, no, it didn't put a damper on the honeymoon at all. We we had a great time. Rayleigh seemed unfazed by the trade. After all, this was the fourth time that he had been moved. Originally drafted by the Dodgers, traded to the Twins, traded back to the Dodgers, traded to the Rays in 2022, and then, of course, recently to the Mariners. His 2023 season with Tampa Bay was his biggest exposure to the big leagues so far in his career. We'll get into his story later on in this video, but what's important to know is that he is a legit power speed threat. He ranked in the 84th percentile of MLB in barrel rate with a 12.9% barrel rate and the 87th percentile in sprint speed, averaging 28.8 feet per second. He was one of just 10 players in baseball who were in the top 20% of the league in both categories. Some of those other 10 players are Mike Trout, Luis Robert Jr., Matt Chapman, Byron Buxton, and Teoscar Hernandez. With his 19 home runs and 14 stolen bases in the 118 games he played in 2023, he was on pace for about 26 home runs and 19 stolen bases over a 162 game season, right on the edge of being a 2020 guy. And when he's not in the batter's box, he's dealing on the mound. This is a 50 mile an hour EFIS that he threw to Vlad Guerrero Jr. to strike him out. And Vladdy even signed a ball for him stating, you got me. Of course, the next time Vladdy came around, the bases were loaded and he got his revenge. And he launches this one to left field. But on a more serious note, Luke provides a defensive versatility that teams love. He can play any outfield position as well as first base. His plus speed allows him to cover more ground. And last year with the Rays, he played 32 games at first base with 62 games coming in the outfield. And for what the Mariners gave up to acquire Luke Rayleigh, this might be another one of those DePoto got him moments. Got him. Got him. So let's get into the story of Luke Rayleigh and how he got to this point. But first, as always, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM if you're a fan of this type of content. And to support the Couch GM brand, make sure to follow me across social medias. And if you or someone you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, you can visit lenderconnorweb.com to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. Now, let's get into it. Luke Rayleigh grew up in Medina, Ohio, which is about 30 minutes southwest of Cleveland. He would attend Highland High School in Medina, and he was named to the Ohio All-State baseball team as a senior. He would go undrafted out of high school, after which he would enroll at Lake Erie College. Lake Erie is a Division II program. Rayleigh played in the highly touted Cape Cod League in the summer of 2014, and then in the Northwoods League in the summer of 2015. He would end up leading that league in home runs that summer with 14. In his junior season at Lake Erie, Rayleigh would slash 424 with 12 home runs, 39 RBIs, and a 528 on base percentage in 47 games. He also logged 11 steals. After his junior year, he would be drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers in the seventh round of the 2016 MLB Draft. And that 2016 draft for the Dodgers was absolutely stacked because as of August 21st, 2022, the Dodgers had selected 16 future MLBers in those 40 rounds, including Gavin Lux, Will Smith, Mitch White, Dustin May, Luke Rayleigh, Tony Gonzalez, Graham Ashcraft, Bailey Ober, and Zach McKinstry. Rayleigh would get to work after the draft in 2016 and begin his five-year road to the show. In 2016, he would play through rookie ball and A ball. He spent all of 2017 in high A with the Quakes, played in double A for the Tulsa Drillers in 2018 for a majority of the year, until at the trade deadline, he would be sent over to Minnesota along with Logan Forsyth and Devin Smeltzer in exchange for Brian Dozier. Over 120 games in double A that year, he hit 275 with 20 home runs and 69 RBIs. In 2019, he would then play in 33 games for the Rochester Red Wings in AAA, batting 302 with a 362 on base percentage and 878 OPS with seven home runs and 21 RBIs. He only played in 33 games that year as he suffered a serious ankle injury in mid-May, which eventually required surgery and a long rehab stint. The Twins were big fans of Rayleigh's plate discipline as up to that point he owned a career 361 on base percentage and they knew that he would gradually add power with his 6'3", 220 frame. 
and he earned some points in my book with his favorite TV show being The Office. He would then play in the Arizona Fall League with the Salt River Raptors, winning the Arizona Fall League Hitter of the Week before being added to the Twins 40-man roster on November 20th, 2019. Later that offseason, the Twins decided to upgrade their starting rotation by adding Kenta Maeda from the Dodgers, which would end up sending Luke Rayleigh and Bruce R. Gradwell to Los Angeles. Rayleigh would not play in 2020 due to COVID, and then early on in 2021, he would get his first opportunity in the big leagues. He started out the season on the taxi squad with the Dodgers, and when Cody Bellinger suffered a left calf contusion in Oakland in early April, Luke Rayleigh would get the call. In 2021 with the Dodgers, he would be called up to the big leagues five separate times and would play in just 12 complete games out of the 33 that he played in total. As you might imagine with that inconsistency in playing time with your first exposure to the big leagues, you can't really expect too much success. He would finish the year with the Dodgers batting 182 with a 538 OPS over those 33 games. He would record two home runs and four RBIs. But those two home runs were not wall scrapers. It's so hard. This ball to deep center, and this is going to get out. This ball traveled 472 feet and was the Dodgers' longest home run of the 2021 season. But when he wasn't with the Dodgers, he was tearing it up in AAA. Over 72 games, he batted 294 with a 963 OPS, 19 home runs, 69 RBIs, and 8 stolen bases. The Tampa Bay Rays liked what they saw, and during spring training 2022, they would make a trade to acquire Luke Rayleigh. They would send AA reliever Tanner Dodson back to Los Angeles. His 2022 season was much of the same from 2021. He had a couple different stints with the Rays this year, and in playing just 22 games with the Rays, he batted 197 with a 306 on base percentage, a 584 OPS, including one home run and four RBIs. And like 2021, when he wasn't in the big leagues, he was tearing it up in AAA. In 63 games with the Durham Bulls, he batted at 300 with a 401 on base percentage, a 929 OPS, including 14 home runs, 50 RBIs, and seven stolen bases. All he needed was consistency in his playing time, and he would prove that he can perform. And that consistency in playing time is what he got in 2023. He also stated that he completely redid his swing heading into the 2023 season. In an interview, he stated, I basically redid my whole swing last offseason, the biggest thing being I had a leg kick, and my leg kick was super successful in the minor leagues. But I felt with the increased velocity that you see in the big leagues and the extra movement that pitchers have, it was just too much to maintain. I felt like part of the reason I had a leg kick was to produce power, and I didn't feel like I needed to produce more power. I feel like with a basic swing, I can get the ball out of any yard and not have an issue. I think that that definitely played a part in the success. And the success he's talking about is his 2023 breakout season. As described earlier, he was one of the best power speed threat combos in the big leagues. Over 118 games played, he batted 249 with a 333 on base percentage, an 824 OPS, 19 home runs, 49 RBIs to go along with 14 steals. His favorite pitch to hit this year was the changeup as he had a 340 batting average against this pitch, a 620 slug, and yeah, he took George Kirby deep in T-Mobile Park this year off of that pitch. I have a feeling we'll be seeing quite a few of these this year. Home runs in Seattle by Rayleigh, not home runs given up by Kirby. You know what I mean. And from that same interview from earlier, which was actually with the Mariners, Aaron Goldsmith and Gary Hill, Luke stated it's hard enough to hit big league pitching when you're seeing it every single day. And it's really hard to do it when you're seeing it every third day or maybe a pinch hit every now and then. It definitely makes a difference being out there more consistently. And how would Luke describe his playing style? Gritty. I think that's the best way to describe myself is I will do anything that the team needs me to do to win baseball games. I don't care if it's getting hit by a pitch, laying down a bunt, stealing a base, laying out in the outfield or running into a wall. I'm gonna do it. I play 110% all the time. So what's the plan for Rayleigh in a Mariners uniform? Luke said he spoke to the manager of the Mariners, Scott Service, who told him he'll be playing a lot of corner outfield. 
Luke said that's kind of going to be the primary position, but Service said don't put the first base glove away. If Ty ever needs a break or if there's any kind of bad situation for him or a better situation for me, that Luke can see a little bit at first base. He even said with Julio possibly getting a couple days off here and there that I could find myself in center field as well. Defensive versatility is a huge plus and it's a reason why you'll see Luke Rayleigh likely in the Mariners lineup every day. And I think it's very realistic you'll see Rayleigh in the top half of the lineup at some point in 2024. Whether or not this is what the lineup will look like come opening day is up for debate, but in my opinion, you start with the guy who gets on base the most in JP Crawford. You have your superstar, of course, batting second in Julio. Another great power speed combo behind Julio is Luke Rayleigh. Mitch Garver batting cleanup, who consistently puts together quality at bats, has a low chase percentage, and barrels up mistakes. Cal Raleigh, who has a bit more swing and miss, but has that power batting five. Batting six, you have the right field platoon in Hanniger, who they're going to try to keep on the field as much as possible, at the same time working Dominic Canzone in some regular reps, Ty France batting 7, Luis Abrias 8, Josh Rojas 9. But no matter where in the order he's hitting or where in the field he's playing, Luke Rayleigh very well may be the key under the radar pickup for the Mariners this offseason. Thank you for watching, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM for more content like this, and let me know your thoughts on this player profile and who I should cover next.